1999 Emeryville City Planning Commission. Could we rise and pledge allegiance to the flag? Could you call the roll, please? Sure. Commissioner Ku? Here. Commissioner Owens? Here. Commissioner Getz? Here. Commissioner Lutz? Here. And Chair Mooney? Here. Commissioners Ballingero and uh, Jermaine are excused. Um, before we get to citizens to be heard, um, uh, representatives for Lanier and Kinko's, uh, we have a little problem. Um, without these two planning commissioners here, these two planning commissioners live across the street um, and I believe are planning on recusing themselves so we won't have a quorum for your project. We have a meeting scheduled next Thursday, April 29th or May 27th. So we can't act on your items. I'm wondering if you would like to set the date for your hearings and go enjoy the beautiful weather. Can can they come next week? But uh, would April twenty. Well, I can continue it to April oh. to a date certain. Uh, on behalf of Kinko's, I would also ask for the possible date. So it'll be April 29th, next Thursday night. And what we'll do is we'll publish an amended agenda. Okay. It'll it's in right. plenty of time. In plenty of time. And, and, and since and they were advertised for this meeting, and you're formally continuing them to the 29th, we're fine. All right. Okay. Um, City Attorney, do, will I officially open those? Say they're continued and then yes. close them. So. And unless there's someone else here that wants to indicate that they're, we're going to give testimony tonight, uh, we'll just be continuing them, and you don't need to stay. And I don't see anybody else jumping up and down. So I tried very hard to find a reason not to be recused. We were trying to figure out whether it was 300 feet or 280 or 320, and I so lost. That, so that, that was the 10-minute discussion here. So we apologize. Sorry. Enjoy the beautiful weather. Okay. Uh, item two, citizens be heard. Are there any citizens that wish to speak on any items that are not on tonight's agenda? Seeing none come forward, we'll move to action recaps. The action recap is not ready, and we'll move on to public hearing. Um, um, Chair? Yes. Don't we have, what about this one? That, that's not ready either. That's not ready. Okay. That's Definitely not ready. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Director Capio, um, you want to do the 10-10-46 uh, uh, street? Uh, pl planning, uh, Planner Cromarty will do that staff report. Great, sir. Chair, commissioners, and members of the public, um, this item is a conditional use permit and a design review application for 56 um, live work units, which are going to be on a property located on 46th and Adeline Street. As many of you may know, uh, that property actually straddle, straddles the property lines between the cities of Emeryville and the cities of Oakland. And I will um, just try to refresh the Commission's um, uh, memory. Um, and in December, we brought this item before you for an informational meeting, and that was a very good meeting for our staff because a number of issues were discussed, and you gave us specific directions with regard to um, how you would like to have the project treated and to give us guidance with regard to processing it. And um, as in, in a moment, I will get into those items, but um, I just wanted to give you some additional background with regard to the project. Um, at present, the um, project consists of an 87,000 approximately square foot former industrial warehousing and uh, distribution building, of which 40 units of live work will be situated in the city of Emeryville, and approximately 16 will be situated in the uh, city of Oakland. Um, the building is dealing, has extensive changes along the Adeline or the uh, western frontage and they will be preserving and renovating the um, southern facade which is located along 46th Street. Um, parking spaces are going to, um, the applicant is proposing 66 parking spaces um, and I'll get into the off street parking section in just a moment. We've done an evaluation through CEQA and we filed a notice of intent to adopt a negative declaration. Um, there is an issue about an outstanding case closure le letter which is still forthcoming from the city of, um, excuse me, from the county of Alameda. Uh, staff anticipates any uh, potential findings and or issues um, 
we'll have a, an accompanying set of provisions to satisfy those and uh, we have anticipated that and uh, drafted a condition of approval which will require that the applicant fulfill any conditions which have been noted by Alameda County and that's a practice that we've used before when we've had similar projects. With regard to the architectural design, I'd like to actually uh, direct you to the, to the board. This is the, uh, the project, and we forgive the small size, but this is what was submitted by the applicant. Uh, the top elevation represents the uh, westernmost elevation, uh, which is fronting on to Adeline Street, and the uh, lower elevation represents the southern elevation, which is fronting on 46th Street. For those of you that are familiar with the building, you can immediately see the southern elevation is basically maintaining that existing building facade in terms of the stucco, the cornice treatments, and the architectural elements. The uh, one significant factor of that elevation is the reduction of that fairly high tower. Um, that issue did come up at the Planning Commission um, at our last meeting, and there was a discussion as to whether it would be appropriate to, to uh, pursue a use permit to, uh, to increase the tower height or to maintain it. The uh, commission essentially left that to the applicant. The applicant submitted a plan which you have before you which is showing actually the um, height being reduced in the neighborhood of 40 feet. So the use permit for potential height is not uh, part of this project. In evaluating um, this elevation with Planning Director Capio, we basically uh, felt that it was important, at least in essence or um, in a preliminary fashion to maintain some of that visual focal point of that tower, the taller tower created, and so uh, you will find a condition of approval under the design review section, which is asking for a tower element approximately 10 feet in height to extend over the roof line, and that um, is essentially a compromise position to, again, allow that uh, tower element to not be completely erased, eliminated, to still provide some focal point um, for that building entry and also to undercut the, uh, the downside for the applicant with regard to design, cost, and architectural. So uh, that will you will find in your uh, conditions of approval. With regard to the, um, in all other facts, they will be um, actually renovating the existing door window frames. Um, th there is also a similar condition that along this uh, south elevation, the city really does feel that it's important to put in new frames and windows in terms of aluminum frame in there so that um, we can actually have a nice match. The problem we found is that many times when you're um, putting the new windows and door cuts, it's hard to find a match. And so if you replace part of them and not the others, you do not have a uniform facade. And we kind of defeat the purpose of the whole renovation effort. So there's a, con there's a condition to, to maintain that level of consistency. Um, with regard to the Adeline Street frontage, um, the, the applicant does some very interesting and pretty creative things, and we, we find it, you know, uh, it was very fun to review, and I have to, you know, commend him for his creativity. Uh, he's using a combination of uh, vertical and horizontal metal siding, uh, punch-out windows, in addition to maintaining um, a certain corner of the stucco. And uh, what that seems to do is to create a complete play along that Adeline Street and a lot of interest. Um, that coupled with that really kind of intricate articulation as well as the, um, uh, the types of material and the spacing of windows uh, will create a very interesting facade. The colors are also fairly unique. You've got a combination of the mustard yellow, the green, the blue, and then the traditional sand, kind of tan, and the brown, which is a wraparound from that, sou um, that sou 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 southern elevation. Um, this elevation is somewhat dated because the Klaus parking system, which we, at our last meeting, decided to take off that line is actually shown on this elevation. Um, this actually, these windows are now in the new elevations extending down. Um, the Klaus parking system has been incorporated as per the, uh, the desires of the Planning Commission and what you'll do, they were formally located here, that's this elevation. They have been taken and put on the uh, easternmost side in the parking lot area, which I think was the direction of the Commission. So I think they addressed that very well. There are approximately uh, 44 parking spaces in um, the Klaus parking system with 19 um, on-site or on-grade parking spaces for a total of 66. Um, the total project is 56 spaces, so they actually are meeting the one of the second requirements the Commission had asked for to make sure that the uh, 
project parks at least one space per unit, regardless of whether that was in actually Oakland and in Emeryville, and they have satisfied that. So that's an, that's an area that we found that they uh, really did very well in. I've already touched on a few. Uh, the zoning and general plan, um, you'll find in the staff report the uh, general plan is consistent and we have no problem with that. And with regard to the zoning, um, there are a couple things that I'd like to touch upon. Um, the first has to deal with the live work requirements and specifically um, one of the areas that's been uh, kind of noted in the staff report has to do with the floor area ratio. Um, presently the building, the 87,000 square feet, does not conform to the floor area ratio requirement and so they're over. However, the commission knows that this has a, been a long-standing non-conforming structure, and so it's presently non-conforming. Um, we have um, interpreted the uh, non-conforming provisions to find out that uh, a variance in staff's opinion would not be necessary uh, for the following reasons. Uh, number one, it is a not long-standing non-conforming building in terms of the size as well as the use. Um, this is a medium density residential district and the former uh, I believe it was the San Francisco Urban Natural Tea Company um, was also warehousing and industrial use. So both the size of the building and the use were non-conforming. Um, the applicant's proposal would be a major improvement because by the elimination of this interior area, which we approximate is probably about 7,000 square feet, and that's just on grade, so it could probably amount to anywhere between 10 to 15,000 square feet if you totaled out all the floors. Um, by eliminating and demolishing that, the degree of nonconformity is lessened. So this project actually builds, brings this nonconforming building closer to the uh, actual floor area requirement. The same is true for the use. The former uh, warehousing industrial use was not consistent with the residential zoning. The present live work use would be consistent with the conditional use permit, which we now have before you, and staff has been able to make all the affirmative findings. So we, we, in essence, find that the current project um, really lessens the degree of nonconformity, both with regard to the building and the use. For that reason, we have not exercised our option for a variance, and we are instead uh, making an interpretation that it's, uh, it's under the nonconforming provisions. If the commission feels differently, then we would certainly follow your direction and, and pursue a variance. But uh, at this point, we don't feel one is necessary. Um, the second major point has to deal with the use permit for the height of the building, excuse me, the tower element we've already covered. Off-street parking has already been addressed. The applicants provided 66. We needed a minimum of 56. Um, there are actually 10 over. Um, the real advantage to this, again, to touch upon the off-street parking situation, actually 16 of these spaces, this line right here, represents the dividing line um, for the 16 live work spaces that would be in Oakland. The current proposal would not only meet the uh, parking requirements for the 40 Emeryville units, but it would also um, meet the requirements for the reality of the, of the Oakland unit. So um, the applicant has actually presented a plan that will park the entire project, even though the city of Oakland is not going to require that. And so I think that was a, uh, a, a very good, good, good um, point, and um, the staff is supporting that. I think the applicant did a very good job, and we have to commend it. Now, the other thing that I want to qualify that is that he's doing it using a unique system, which is the Klaus parking system. This is a three-tiered system, which uh, does require uh, some undergrounding or below-level parking, and it kind of shells parking and they rotate up. Um, currently, the Uniform Building Code doesn't really have sections which apply to that. We wrote to the ICBO and they actually deferred back to staff, and so at this point, it's very important that we make sure prior to a building permit or occupancy that we can uh, verify that this system will work in our seismic zone four for vertical and seismic loads and rotations and those types of things. Um, so we are making our approval contingent upon getting that type of approval to the satisfaction of our building department prior to any kind of building permit that's being pulled. And um, so with that in mind, you know, our parking would be fine. Design reviews have already been covered. And then the last major point that I, I wanted to make, um, just to keep the report short, and I'll be happy to answer any questions, has to deal with the jurisdiction. Uh, we've had a couple of uh, projects. I believe the, the Gateway was one of them where we, we have the joint Oakland and Emeryville projects. 
Um, in those instances, the, the practical kind of practice has been that the city that has the majority of the project normally takes the lead with regard to review of building, department plans, and also uh, services by police and fire. Um, with that in mind, since clearly the majority, at least uh, three-fourths of the units are in Reville, uh, we have um, um, decided and we are in con consultation with the City of Oakland that, that uh, the City feels it's appropriate for us to take the lead with regard to the building requirements and to pr providing the emergency services and that condition of approval has been attached uh, to that effect. So um, with these things in mind, we consider it's a very good project. Um, we've covered all of the major issues. We've been addressed and where they have not actually been nailed down, we've had conditions which are been constructed to make sure that those out items would be addressed prior to the building permit. With that in mind, um, staff supports this application and is recommending approval for this condition use permit and design review. Thank you, Mr. Cromarty. Any questions of staff? Mr. Lutz? Yeah, I've got one. And I, I guess I just want a clarification of the policy of uh, the planning department. And uh, we're changing use here. Um, and I know it's a, a lesser intense use on FAR and uh, a non conforming use. But my question becomes, uh, let's say that this use was slightly better versus greatly better. Uh, where, who makes the determination that the use is so good that we don't need a variance? Well, th it's, it's not the good quality of the use. It's, we're removing one non-conforming aspect of the pro property right now because warehousing activity is not permitted in a residential zone. So we've we removed that aspect of nonconformity with this application. We're also slightly reducing the degree of nonconformity of the structure in, in the modifications that are proposed. There still is going to be a nonconforming condition about the structure, which is the FAR exceeds the FAR for a residential district, which is 0.5. So we have left it to your interpretation, we support uh, the fact that the non-conforming structure provisions in the ordinance can be used, and we've outlined the structure is not being moved, the square footage or cubic feet within the structure is not being increased, and then there's a valuation question, which is up to the applicant to demonstrate prior to the um, uh, issuance of a building permit. If that can be demonstrated, the valuation does not exceed a certain amount over a five-year period, then we believe that they will meet the non-conforming provisions. If you disagree with that interpretation, the only avenue to pursue would be a variance, a, a variance from the FAR requirement. In looking through the ordinance for variance findings, I would be glad to discuss with you how we could do it. It would mean another additional step for the applicant. So at this point, we have interpreted and recommended to you that the non-conforming provisions with regard to physical structure meet or that this application meets that. If you disagree, then the applicant would need to come back for a variance. And I believe that the, the variance findings, uh, there are arguments that could be made in favor of the variance. Yeah, and, and that's that's sort of my so it's up it's up to you. But we have given you our interpretation and recommendation. Yeah, uh, and uh, I, I I sort of agree intuitively. Uh, my question is t twofold: legally, where do we stand, and also precedent-wise, where do we stand? You do the legal one. <laughs> <laughs> With that adverb, I guess, punch it over this way. Um, if the applicant can show that the cost <coughs> of improvement fall within the requirements for the continuation of a non-conforming structure, I'm comfortable that we're, we're not creating a precedent that's not already allowed in, in the um, zoning ordinance. In fact, I would be more comfortable following sort of those specific provisions in the ordinance than creating a variance. I think a variance uh, um, creates a little bit more ambiguity and perhaps the potential to argue more um, precedential effects than if we have our ordinance that says you can continue a non-conforming structure under these very discrete reasons and assuming the applicant's able to show that they're meeting all those and, and we know th I think three out of four are there. I, the fourth on the cost is, is unknown at, th at this point. Um, and I don't know if the applicant can speak to that later, that I, I would prefer that uh, to take that approach than going to a variance. Okay, and I don't want to be, and beat this to, in, to the ground, but is assuming the valuation some uh, time in the future exceeds what's in the ordinance, what happens? 
You mean that within the five-year period, yes. the cost of improvements exceed the value of the property? Yeah. Um, what, what, what do we do? Well, I guess we could note it in the file, uh, and the applicant could come in for variance, but I think you're setting a direction now, quite frankly, for the remainder of the, of the new life of the property. And it's, a, it's a policy interpretation. I believe that this situation is unique in many ways because they straddle city boundaries. There's much different zoning on each side of that boundary. This is a very unique structure within a residential district. I don't believe there is another one like it within the city in terms of uh, within the RM district. They're in a lot of unique circumstances, and that building has been a local icon. I mean, that is a very well-known building, and th I think they've taken fairly good care to maintain the integrity of uh, the structure and the, the sort of, uh, particularly along that one side, now albeit the tower is a, I think is an issue, but um, there, there is a, a lot of care that's been given to the integrity in the form of that building and maintaining it. Okay. Any other questions of staff regarding their report? Hearing none, would the applicant like to make a presentation or comments? I'm John Grove from MPH Architects. I represent the client as well. Um, your comments are uh, positively received, um, except for one variation, it's 57 units instead of 56. In moving the cloud system to the back, we found space for one more unit, and we noted that on the revised drawings. So. That's the only um, alteration I could make to the uh, application. Okay. Any questions of the applicant? Hearing none, the public hearing is open. Are there any members of the public that wish to comment on this matter? Well, I didn't come here absolutely certain I would have anything to say, but I, I live right up the street from, from this building on 46th Street on the Oakland side. And I'm, I, I think overall it sounds like a good idea. I think it would be good for the neighborhood to do something like this with this building. Um, and I came here with some curiosity about some of the terms that were used, and now there's some more curiosity. One thing I'm wondering, does this extend all the way to 53rd Street? Could, could you step forward a bit so we can pick you up on the mic? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm wondering if, if this project extends all the way to 53rd Street, and if, and if the existing warehousing and retail outlet that interstate slash Wonder Bread still maintains, I mean, they were manufacturing Wonder Bread in this building. It hasn't just been a Wonder Bread thing, uh, a warehouse. They were manufacturing there 10 years ago. Across the street, Flechtel is still manufacturing. So I'm wondering how all these things interplay and if it extends all the way to 53rd Street and, and whether the whole building, that whole area is going to be come live work or if there's still going to be warehouse and, and retail going on on the site. Thank you. Barry, do you want to give a... Yes, um, to answer your question, um, excuse me, um, and so if I'm not answering right, please, but no, I'm not doing a good job. Uh, no, the qu your first question, I think, of whether extend to 50 or that's not going to happen. Um, this is the, the kind of subject site. This is the corner of 46th and Adeline right here. It goes probably midway down um, 46th Street and it, it apparently midway down Adeline Street, so it will not extend this far, it's going to be basically that corner section of that so, building. So the far end of the property where it goes on yeah. the third street is going to be continued like it is. Wonder That's Bread correct. stays. Yes. Right. To That's the best of our knowledge. Okay. Right. Nice and with regard to the other uses, we really don't know. I mean, you know, there, there are other uses, they're case by case. Uh, what I can tell you is those other uses, um, for the most part, are non-conforming uses. In other words, although that area has is, is been designated for residential, there are certain uses which pre-exist, you know, the industrial and the flat and they continue to exist. So we have certain very strict provisions that if they discontinue use, we, we can, you know, stop them. But um, what we want to do ideally in the zoning, just to give you a little bit more of an explanation, is when we have an opportunity to change it to the, to, the, to the use that is permitted by the zoning, this actual use of live work is far better for even neighbors than the previous kind of industrial warehousing. And so that's... I agree. It sounds like a good idea. Yeah. I just wanted to be clear. Oh. We, we, we yeah, need you to come to the mic, Mike. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming. The other thing I was wondering, I guess, is there any, is this going to be 
purely market rate live work usage, or is there going to also be you have to ask the provision for low income people and or you know struggling artists to come in, or is it going to be looking for yuppies to come in? I'm the answer was market driven. Right. Did that answer the all record. your questions? Yes. Okay. I can Thank comment you. that within the last few years, I recall uh, a, a approval by this planning commission for substantial and expensive improvements by Flecto. I, no, I took pictures of them. I took pictures of their improvements. Well, so okay. you live there then. You, re yeah. you recall it. But that suggests they're here for a while. Yeah. Well, yeah. Would you mind giving your name for the record, sir? Dan Matson. Dan Matson. Thank you for coming. Are there any other members of the public that wish to comment on this item? Seeing none coming forward, I'll close the public hearing. Commissioner, comments, discussion. Well, um, yeah, I got. I have two. Go ahead. I have two comments. The first one is uh, that I'm delighted to see that the backing out onto Adeline has been deleted from the plan. That was a real sticking point for me. And uh, the second one is that if, uh, if for some reason there is a problem with this uh, the hydraulic parking system, um, I would like to hear about it early enough on that we can maybe uh, step in and help solve it. Uh, because I know other jurisdictions in California have approved this parking system, and I think we can get through it. If there turns out to be a problem, I'd just like to hear about it before it stops the project. Got it. And, I, and it's my intention, too. I think it's a very creative solution, and it's merely a matter of making sure the three-tiered system has not been used in that many cases, and oh, we I just want to make sure that, that we're dotting around. in New York. Right. Oh, and Tokyo, too. So oh. I <laughs> Mr. Lo the comment in was Kennedy's it's in Berkeley. Basement? No, in Patrick Kennedy's basement. No, that's just that's just double. No, uh, uh, 48 units. Uh, sir, 48 sir, sir, if you're going to make comments, you need to come to the mic so you can hear. Okay. Chair, or excuse me, Commissioner Lutz. Uh, yeah, I have I have one question about the uh, parking system, and that is um, the noise issue uh, and my thinking is what happens if somebody comes home late two three in the morning and wants to park their car or whatever what what issues are there related to that oh, you mean how noisy is the jack yeah yeah and, and in other words like is this going to be operating 24 hours a day and uh, what happens when somebody comes in late uh, it, it I believe it, it probably sounds like a winch um, there's sort of a hydraulic motor that that um, Oh, it does. Okay, so, so it's do we do we have electric, do we have exposure to noise issues here? Well, there's a we, we have standard a condition. condition of approval that um, that's been added because this is a live work uh, n number K. Uh, well, actually, I guess it's JKL that got unlabeled, but it's on page two, right under K, about the the buyer beware clause since this is a live work unit, and you could add the fact that there will be a mechanized parking system which may in fact produce some amount of noise during odd hours. We what was Commissioner Lutz thinking perhaps of the existing adjacent residences to the east? Oh, I guess I, I'm of the mind having viewed at least a two-tiered system and, wa and listened to it. There is some noise, but I don't think it will be um, audible from off-site. Okay. Um, and so we could it, check that, but I, I, I highly doubt it. I would it. be, I would be really, um, it, particularly since this is a three-tier system, and I, I, I don't know anything about these things, and maybe I'm being a little bit uh, overly sensitive to that. But uh, I certainly would like to have some kind of uh, uh, measurement of the noise system once the thing is installed, and if it becomes really uh, an issue, uh, again, I, I, I can see this as, you know, three or four o'clock in the morning. You know what the sounds are. Uh, that we might want to, you know, there might be some ways of baffling the noise if required. Maybe it's not an issue, but it's something we should take a look at. We can work with the um, building department and require that um, the final um, plans or documents that are submitted to them submit information about noise. Yeah. Or we and can go see one and actually do. I, I I maybe the, the yeah. architect yeah. could address it. Isn't this a hydraulic system? No. Which is pretty quiet. 
John Grove again. Um, to my knowledge, uh, it's not very noisy. It's a hydraulic system. Uh, I would imagine it's probably no noisier than any hydraulic elevator that you've experienced. And uh, I think there are remedies that we could uh, work with the building department on that. Uh, it, we haven't figured out exactly what type of structure that'll uh, enclose those systems right now, but if it were a uh, type five uh, building, uh, I'm sure an STC rating of 51 or plus would probably handle that. Uh, uh, that's what the requirement is for uh, transmission of noise from unit to unit. Uh, that's the minimum for that. And um, in something in that range uh, is probably what we're talking about. Would, okay, the, so would, would the applicant be acceptable and would it cover you, Mr. Lutz, to have an a, a item that said something to the effect uh, in the event that uh, the parking units create a noise uh, concern, noise problem, i.e. we get complaints that you'll work on remediating sure. the problem? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Did I misread the plans? Are they in a structure with yeah. a roof? Yes, they're yeah. in a structure. They're not like out there by themselves. Right. I didn't understand that. In, like fa in fact, uh, depending on costs, I mean, it's got to be, uh, in a, there's going to have to be a pit uh, constructed for the way it operates. Um, if you don't already know, uh, it literally has to have room for the bottom uh, car, if there are three cars in there, to be uh, available at the garage door at, uh, at the uh, parking level. So that means there'll be a stack of two above it. And then the top car has to have uh, availability uh, to be moved out of its tier, so that means there would be two cars under it. So that's going to be a relatively high volume in there, and the sound effects uh, uh, in, in the pit itself would be minor because it's going to have to be concrete, a concrete block. <coughs> Excuse me. And any structure above that, uh, if it was Type 5, uh, it, we're probably talking about um, uh, gypsum plaster on the outside, plus it'll be sheathed with plywood for shear, that's the structural requirement, and then um, more, more likely than not, two by six studs, uh, probably half inch resilient channel, which uh, uh, with chipboard on, on the uh, interior side of that, that and the uh, half inch resilient channel deadens the, uh, the impact somewhat of the, the wall. That, that assembly is about an STC f uh, 51. Um, and that's pretty, and with uh, also uh, uh, sound attenuating bats in between. You know, kind of and then it's fine. That's basically it. Yeah, and what we'll do is, is when, once it's built, we'll do a, uh, we can do a, um, a decimal meter or something just to ver validate it. Fine with me. We have. Okay. A handheld one so we can get. So do we want a condition such yeah. as that, or? Yeah, I, I, I you really. Want a, a condition yeah. accordingly? Yeah. yeah, let's just take 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 a picture of that. Any other questions? Uh, Any other concerns? I, I got. Mr. Koo. Mary, can, can you remind me of what we said in December? It was a while ago. Uh, I'm reading this about the parking. We said we loved the place. <laughs> I'm sure we did. <laughs> well, there are 16 units in Oakland, 41 in Emeryville. 16, uh, Oakland requires zero parking. Um, we require 62. They've provided 66. Um, I, I, I'm just changed I, by one and a half or two. No, yeah. I, I'm not, well, the numbers I'm reading are the ones that are on the plan. So these are the correct numbers. Um, which means we are nowhere near one and a half parking spots per unit as a project. And we were all pretty happy with that? We went around, I recall we about a 45 minute or an hour's discussion about that. Okay. And at the end there was, we started off with a camp that wanted one and a half mm -hmm. per unit in Emeryville and Oakland. Mm -hmm. And a camp that wanted less than is now being offered and my recollection is that we came to a consensus that if they strictly met the parking requirements for the units within Emeryville by Emeryville standards and therefore met the zoning ordinance for Emeryville and if they provided in actuality one space per unit and assigned it that way so that there weren't going to be people with no parking cruising around a neighborhood filling up the sidewalk, the, the curbs. I, th I believe I recall a consensus at that time that said go for it. That was that's sort of how it. Yeah. I, I recall it. Th th that's that's correct. Um, when we came in, there was also the issue about whether it was residential or live work at that time, if you right. remember. And there was a well, question about the second. There was a question about the second this. bedroom. Yeah. So th that was actually the layer in, in front of that. The, then the layer that that the commissioner Guest just mentioned, and what it basically came down to is the commission basically, as Mr. Getz had indicated, um, basically, you know, one unit 
per one parking space per unit. So if you calculated a couple different ways, it would still satisfy you. If you calculated by 1.5 for the live work, that would require 60 spaces, and it would satisfy it. If you calculate the other way by saying, you know, one one space per unit, 40 spaces, it provides 40 on-site spaces through that, um, would that basically satisfy the practical parking of the requirement. And, and this clearly, um, I think, the applicant has satisfied the direction which you gave him in December. Why does Oakland require no parking? Is it because they just don't have a provision? I can't tell you why Oakland does what uh, Oakland does. I would say new. Why did I even <laughs> ask? That? I, I believe that it's. I'm um, sure Mr. Protopapas could give us a long a, dissertation. It's a matter of uh, they believe they want to encourage the reuse of old structures. They also don't require any environmental review, which for a lot of old industrial structures is amazing. fairly amazing to me. But different standards, different city. Uh, we've tried to m marry them and make it work, and I believe that the discussion at the end of the December meeting was at least one parking space per unit would suffice. And assigned that way, which I see in the conditions yes, of approval right. here. And given that they've gone through so much effort to meet that, I'm satisfied on the parking. Okay. Any other comments, discussion? Mm, sure there were. What did the other decide to do about the tower? That they will work it out with staff? Well, they've decided, right? Want to go over the... They've conditions? decided to eliminate it yeah, yeah. and did sort of... Um, I decided that yeah. they should... There's a little bit more effort that's required uh -huh. because it's an important architectural element. So there's a condition of approval that's been... So is that something you want us to deal with? Um, if you want to comment that it's important or not important to you, there were mixed comments at the December meeting. Some of you said it was important. You all recognized the feasibility of retaining the old tower uh, in terms of the expense of it. Um, there's been a small gesture to it. I, given what it is now and what it will be, the building will look a lot different. I believe that some more gesture is desirable. I and that Dorothy's is what my, my, my condition please. reflects. You're talking about condition 5F on page 5, correct? Yes. Is there A any longest standing resident of the neighborhood made an impassioned plea at that meeting. As you know, it's, uh, uh, <coughs> we've given you indications before that it's a financial burden on the client to maintain the tower. Uh, and we've done even further reconnaissance of uh, the structural system there, and um, we've uh, unearthed the footings to the uh, interior columns and uh, uh, somewhat around the tower. And uh, there's additional uh, we're going to have to put a perimeter footing uh, around the base of the uh, building, which is uh, an additional cost that we didn't uh, encounter before. Uh, this is a totally unreinforced masonry building, and all of the steel structure inside depends on this unreinforced masonry for, su <coughs> for support. It means we have to put steel pilasters up against the masonry on the interior of the building, which uh, uh, and th then would ho help hold up the uh, foot and a half thick um, masonry as uh, as it stands now. Right now, uh, in, in a severe earthquake, that um, building would totally collapse because there's nothing holding up the perimeter. So this has consequences to the tower. Uh, the tower has some steel in it, we believe. Um, so uh, And the financial consequences have not been totally uh, uh, revised, but uh, I have a hunch the f fee for rehabilitating this would be increased significantly. So I don't think we've changed our position on this in any way. Um, the We're working with staff and w amongst ourselves trying to come up with creative ideas. So that's the latest. Okay. Is it time to uh, roll through the conditions of approval to see if there's any comments or changes by the Planning Commission? Yeah. 
So we have page one. Any comments on page one? Mr. I got Lutz. One, I got one on G. Uh, and maybe I missed this, but the site shall be well maintained and shall be kept free of litter, debris, and weeds. Uh, I'd like to see graffiti somewhere. Okay. Do you want the graffiti standard? Yeah. Uh, we've done it for some projects where you... <laughs> we do have one where where you uh, have indicated that it's once uh, it's discovered because of um, certain hours co co security like concerns that. that the police department has about messages right. that it be removed within 48 or 72 hours. Yeah, and I don't know if Are that's... Are we sure that's not the public art? No. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> How about uh, all references You're a man. to 56 uh, units being 57? So anyway, is that is that a separate one or is that added on to this? Is that a, I, I don't know what we want to do. Oh. It might it, it might be better if if that we have that as a standard condition. Okay. And and, and then the graffiti. And then the is graffiti. it five working days? What's comfortable for you? I you, at some. I like five working yeah, days. Um, yeah. I think a lot shorter than that, and you're creating a. Very, you're creating a situation in which few property owners will comply, and therefore selective enforcement is a problem. Okay. Okay. Um, Commissioner uh, Koo uh, pointed out uh, 1C, that 2, that should be 57. Is right. that correct? How about order H? Um, that says all new on site electrical service and communication lines. And in the past, we, we said something like all new services or something. It was a little bit more inclusive. Which one are you on? H. H. No, I think that's. Um, I think that's the that one. It has the word oh. new in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> We've learned. L gets interesting. Okay. Page two. Anything? Uh, Under K, there's a 56 again. We'll change that to 57. And um, at Roman numeral 2A on the second line, I, uh, final building permit plans shall include all special security measures as required by Emeryville Police Department standards. Mm -hmm. Any other comments on page 2? Moving to page 3. No comments. Page 4. No comment. Um, I guess this goes more to uh, just talking about the conditions approvals. Is the ha is the city happy with all the improvements they're doing to the neighborhood? Uh, we reviewed the uh, <laughs> if you're talking with regard to street improvements, we reviewed yeah. it with Public Works and they were satisfied in terms of the standard you know curb gutter sidewalks and then implementation of the uh, standard street trees and then uh, we looked at that in combination with the. Uh, the landscaping, which is mm -hmm. we didn't really touch on, which will be pretty extensive, uh, we think that that would be a sufficient level. The Adeline Street elevation will be transformed. It's basically one big ugly loading dock with a kind of concrete walled structure at the corner. It'll look much different. So, was I there anything that Public Works wanted that wasn't uh, conceded? No, they, uh, we w actually, I sat down with them, and went through them line by line. And they got everything. Okay. These, this is their their, their full complement of requirements. Great. Okay. Thank you. Page five. Oh, uh, <laughs> I didn't see anything here about aluminum windows. You know, the, the windows that you wanted on that facade. Is it that you want aluminum windows or you want uniform windows? Uniform, I think. Oh, but it said aluminum in here. In the staff report. You had that in the yeah. staff report. You that and it, it's, that's not reflected in the conditions. How many windows do you have to change? Okay. Like half or, or okay. three? Excuse me. Um, did you have to change half the windows on the south facade or three? Um, may we uh, we uh, interpreted that to mean that the uniformity of the windows on the um, the Leo, or sorry, not the Leo Street side, the um, Adeline Street side would be in basic conformity with the uh, windows on the existing building. But uh, if you've been out to the site, you'll notice there are a lot of windows that are boarded up, literally. Blank, no, right. no and left. we were going to uh, assess the existing windows, and we were going to put in the boarded up windows, windows that either matched or came as close to that as possible to maintain the historical um, uh, uh, flavor of the building. It's aluminum all day long. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and, it and does. You, and so you're not going to board up all the rest of the windows if you form it. No. No, Just so sure. we're, we're looking for a combination of, of uh, metal windows 
uh, on the uh, uh, parts of the building that are brand new, and windows that um, maintain historical precedent set already. Now, the, we need to evaluate the windows that are in the historical building that are not boarded up because a lot of them are in, pr uh, in poor condition. So they may have to be replaced. But if they're replaced, uh, and if maybe this is something that Barry was uh, alluding to before, you can get uh, vinyl clad aluminum windows that in, a histor in a historical section. Now, if that's what you're talking about, that may be uh, no. a reasonable alternative. But Let me explain what our staff concern was. Our concern was that um, if you have some existing windows that can be you know, refurbished and ones that are, have to be completely replaced, we didn't want a patchwork of different windows. Right. The we problem agree. is that it's difficult sometimes because the windows are old or out of style or what have you to actually find new windows that match. And so you really have a facade along the uh, 46th Street side that is close but really not uniform. Right. So our concern is, um, and we understand the, the applicants. Um, I think we're on the issues. same page about this. Yeah, so the concern is really to have new uniform windows. Right. Okay, the material is really secondary. We want to make sure that if the facade, if we're going to go to all this trouble, we want to make sure we do it right, so we need to have them new and uniform. The materials, we're, we're more than happy to work out with the So applicant. how about a condition that says all windows facing 46th Street shall be of uniform dimension to each other? And, and mullion style or something, or glazing? Shall be, shall be of uniform uh, dimension detail or something like okay. that. What In do you other mean words, dimension? the section. The section will be the same, uh, uh, whether it's vinyl or wood or plastic or aluminum. Okay. We want the same number of window. I mean, of uh, uh, glazing pane, same dimension, same width. We don't want off size. Unless right. that's, that's the what pattern. I mean, you get different. No, it, our intention is to there. to marry uh, two different styles here. If you uh, uh, well, the, the marrying of the different styles no, was no. the Abilene side oh. and then the 46th well, Street side. Let, let me let me just clarify that, Barry. Uh, the style in building, uh, you'll notice that the Adeline so side is an industrial, slightly more avant-garde style. The um, 46th Street side is the historical uh, uh, building, um, and we're trying to marry the two. Now, that do th what we're saying is that the style of windows in the old building will not be changed. Uh, we're trying to keep the historical uh, uh, part of that building and that uh, we'll do what we can to preserve the existing uh, windows. And if they can't be preserved, we'll try to find something that either mimics or uh, brings forth that fl historical flavor. Uh, it's an evaluation of the existing uh, windows that operate. And uh, if they're in uh, restorable shape, we'll do it. Can I ask you a quick question right there? Now, what if half the windows are OK and half of them need to be replaced? Are you proposing that you only replace half the windows with something well, similar as you can find, or that may be a moot. That may be a moot point because m more than half the windows are are boarded well, up. As, as let's speak. say it's not a moot point. What would well, you what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, less than half the windows are in good shape now, and what I'm saying, uh, and so the windows that will be put in place of the ones that are boarded up will be of the same flavor and style of the of the windows that are uh, presently in place. If we can make them uh, as close to what they are as possible, that that would be our intent. Let, let, let me ask staff if they want to suggest a condition of approval that they're comfortable. Well, with. Well, again, the 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 reality is a subject of interpretation of what's new and what's old and whatnot has been somewhat of a concern for ours, and it would really expedite. Our, rep our prefer preference is that you give a condition where we have new uniform windows along that elevation. It's easier to monitor. It's easier to negotiate and work out with the applicant. We have concrete conditions, and then we can implement it. The problem is that when you've got some windows that are you know, in various stages of repair, some are new, then what combination? How do we negotiate? This one's, this one's worth saving. This one's not. It, it, it sometimes becomes unmanageable. Okay, so, so could, could you tell us a condition that you'd be comfortable with? Uh, I would prefer that the elevate the window and the, do the door uh, the door openings. The applicant shall provide uh, new doorways and windows along the 46th Street elevation, which are um, uniform. Shall we place uh, all windows and doors on the 46th Street elevation, which are uniform, um, and new new and uniform. That's what we would prefer. My, and and to, to go along with that, my my thought process is that I've seen when you see this mix and match type of situations, the windows weather at a different rate. And uh, so 
so they do become they may start out as being equally uh, equal in appearance but then the weathering comes in and the uh, new ones are typically a different uh, substrate and uh, the, the weathering just changes and all of a sudden the, you have different appearance. So I, 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 I definitely uh, go along with what uh, staff Um said. I just want to provide a little just a quick insight into two other projects recently where windows have been a very important part of the project, 1500 Park. They tried to save them and what they were doing was mad because of the energy, energy Title 24 standards. So they ended up replacing all of them. And the same thing's happening on Grove Valve. Um, it's really tough to look at that building and know there are windows that need to be saved, but if they're saved, they don't meet the same insulation standards. It's it's fairly difficult to do. And I do have, I share the same concern with Barry in, in terms of them being of uniform dimension and, and you know, the mullions being the same quality and depth and the glazing patterns being the same. So those are the three concerns. That's an important elevation that is evoking of the historic character of the building or the architectural importance of the building. Are, are, are it's we, worth, worth a little time. Yep. Are we comfortable with Mr. Cromartie's condition of approval? Yep. Ryan, do you live with it? I think so. Okay. Client says do, yes. Do, do you want to report, repeat it? Um, Can he repeat the applicant it? shall yeah, provide he, he very simple new way. shall provide new um, door door and window openings, which are new and uniform which uniform. shall be reviewed and approved by staff and we're not saying exactly like they are now but we're saying right. obviously and in I, keeping yeah. with the character of the and building. i can tell you right now we'll work with some flexibility and staff our concern again mr mr commissioner let's hit the nail right on the head we want if we're going to go to all this effort we want to do it right we want to make sure that it's clean and consistent and it's not going to look patchwork because our concern right. is that it will look patchwork if we don't do it this way yeah. i'm glad you added those last four words on there <laughs> Four or five words. <laughs> okay, so we're done with page five. No, I have one thing. Yes, Mr. Uh, um, five A. Five A. It shall provide adequate illumination for on-site security. I think we had a discussion, Andy. We had a discussion about that on the mm -hmm. last one. What is adequate illumination? That's that's very nebulous, and I, I can't can't we get lumens? You had you. Had I promise to get back to you. Where after measuring, I have a list of the places mm -hmm. I promised to measure, and I didn't do it. Okay. But I will do it. <laughs> I'll try and do it before the next meeting, but I don't promise. You mean exactly, the next meeting or the next regular schedule meeting? The next regular. I mean, the, ne the May meeting. Right. I'll oh, I'll, break I'll here. <laughs> certainly do it before the May meeting. I'll get you guys a report on the foot candles in a bunch of different places that we described. So you get Can we put that as a uh, agenda item on the May? <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, anyway, me. Uh, you know, I can. I, I'll. That's my only point. I, right. I would. I, I would like to, for us to come up with some kind of standard. Standard, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. We'll move on that one. okay. Page six. Uh, at the bottom of page five, the applicant shall on. submit revised plans, and this is the business about the tower being ten feet high. It seems like they have submitted revised plans. No, have I missed something? These plans do, do not reflect the, oh, they don't uh, the reflect tower, the tower, no, the tower element. Got it. Okay. This says okay. that the tower is going to be. How about a new tower element? Right. Matter of fact, I, I would change the wording a little bit. Uh, yeah. You, you wouldn't mind if it was more than ten feet higher, right? And right. this this would restrict that to just ten feet. So a minimum of ten. To feet. at least ten feet or minimum. Yeah. That should probably be the proposed tower, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It should be a new tower or the proposed tower. So, could the staff read the condition? I, I agree. Uh, the applicant shall submit revised plans, which provide proposed new tower shall be a minimum of 10 feet above the existing roof line, um, and then the rest of it remains the same. Good to go. Right. You may make a comment. You won't win, but you may make a comment. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the client uh, requests that maybe the wording be changed about uh, uh, something about the fact that uh, saving the tower, but maybe not the existing tower, uh, yeah, under the financial that. duress that uh, that may place him uh, 10 foot uh, seismic loads on even a 10 foot wall in its right. present shape may be a uh, a uh, an issue we've. Yeah. And we we, we to took out the word existing. Excuse me. We took out the word existing. Well, I, one of the intent would be that uh, working with staff, 
it, uh, it, it may be something other than the existing structure that's right. in place. Right. I, th uh, I think we're clear on that. Yeah, no. Okay. Right. Good. Okay. That whole clause seems silly. What? The whole clause seems okay. useless. Okay. Well, page six. Page six. Thank you. <laughs> Page seven. Uh, oh, oh, page six. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Page six D near the bottom. Um, I have a problem with any activity. Uh, oh, you're right. Sleeping I is an activity. Yes. So, yes. Um, work and, activity. And how about intrusive activity? Because or work activity. We don't want to put a situation where somebody's what if working I'm, on the computer. What, right. what if I'm? You're just making them. Any uh, noise generating yes, activity? Yes. Noise yeah. generating. Yeah. I expected staff then to comment that um, smoke and dust generating activity would not be included in noise generating activity. I too would like to go home, but um, what are you talking about? <laughs> staff, I'm sorry, staff. Uh, it can be noxious and or noxious. noisy activity. Bingo. Right. Noise generating or How about just noxious. intrusive? I noxious. That on page you seven, like number noxious. E. Say seven E. Seven E. I thought we addressed at least the noise and the odor. We can add. Um, well, th this is about the no. hours of operation. The hours of operation. So if somebody has a work unit that, no, if it's between six and ten, they can do it. Otherwise, from ten oh one to five fifty nine, they have to be quiet. Look at the list of uses of uh, at four uh, A. And. Tell me that those uses are uses that ought not to be allowed at night. Would you like to drop D? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Would we like to drop D? I'm fine with dropping D. Okay. D's gone. Okay. Page seven. Um, six A three. Do we want to put a sign on the fence saying this is who you call if this place gets really noisy? You remember that? I like that one. Yeah, I mean, it's this not is in a residential neighborhood, okay. and that's what we've done on construction so, in other um, residential neighbors. Applicants shall provide a 24-hour contact telephone number during the per term of construction. Uh, in a highly visible place? Or at, at all times when any construction activity is occurring. Uh, it doesn't have to be 24 right. hours because you're not that but way. What but what that's for is if you're operating outside the hours of 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., we want a phone number so somebody can call and say, right, knock it off. When the Bobcat guy fires right. up at 4 a.m. Right, and that, that that's typically so been the issue. It's not been the actual construction. It's been the people arriving early and idling their it, trucks. It, right, the gentleman left, but they get there an hour early and they're idling all so that. And so that, that really has to be And it was the phone number of the construction manager or assigned or Andy Gass. And the police. Oh, or Andy right. Gass. <laughs> no, it's going to be John's phone, phone number, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Responsible party. Okay. And, and just, just to, again, we, we, we do take that one relatively seriously. Definitely. No, I think it's a good neighbor. Members of this commission have been known to drive by and call the number just to see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> even though the neighbors that would be complaining live in Oakland. <laughs> well, not all the names. More unlikely. Page eight. Nice. <laughs> Are there any other? Yeah, wish? page eight, five. Uh, a, little a, the last word. How about dust? To control water, all active construction areas. That's what it controls. Right. Oh, to control dust impacts? Well, it's talking dust. about dust control. You're dust right. is what water controls. Right. Sorry. Okay. Too picky. Sorry. Now, having gone through that, I'm going to guess that somebody might want to make a motion on ND 99-3. Move approval. I'll second it. Could uh, you could call we, the roll? Sure. Commissioner Kuhn? Aye. Commissioner Owens? Aye. Commissioner Getz? Aye. Commissioner Lutz? Aye. And Chair Mooney? Aye. I'm sorry. That was Owens and And uh, Owens and Kuhn. Kuhn. Since uh, our staff member isn't here, I don't want to get yelled at in a couple weeks right. when we're signing this thing, so I didn't keep good. Okay, how about resolution CPC, I'm sorry, 98-18 and DR-9820? Move approval. Second. Second. I heard yeah. Lutz, What's and that? that's the resolution. Owens? Did she win? Okay. I said it was a little bit louder than Koo did. Lutz and Owens. 
<laughs> what is that resolution? I thought it was just nicer. That's the UP, I'm sorry, UP. That's the use permit one. Yeah, use, use permit, permit and design, design review. Yeah. What did we just vote on? CPC, the negative deck. You have to do the negative Got deck it. first. Oh. Sorry. Sorry, I keep. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, and I'm doing that right, aren't I? You are. See? <laughs> you might think I know what I'm doing. So, um, It'll just take seconds. Same it's mover and second. Moved and seconded. seconded uh, Let's same names. names. Go. Commissioner Koo? Aye. Commissioner Owen? Aye. Commissioner Getz? Aye. Commissioner Lutz? Aye. And Chair Looney? Aye. The unanimous okay. chairman. <laughs> now you're safe. <laughs> Thank you. I move we reopen that item. <laughs> okay. Uh, 6340 Christie Avenue. Next uh, week, please. <laughs> but I, I think I, on advice of council, am I supposed to open the public hearing? We didn't have that. Yeah. Open the public hearing and continue, yeah. and continue it, right. Okay, so I'd like to ask the uh, staff not to report right now. I'd like to open the public hearing. Does anyone want to speak on this matter? Seeing none, we'll continue this to... April 29th, 1999. Hearing closed. 5895 Christie. The hearing continued. Continued, thank you. Uh, 5895 Christie Avenue. Would staff delay their report, please? I'll open a public hearing. Is there anyone that wishes to speak on this item? I do. Yes. Oh, I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing none, I'll move this to. Uh, the 429 agenda as well, and I'll continue the hearing and close it. That moves us down to 1800 Powell Street. I didn't have a report. I presume there isn't one. There isn't one, but if you could open the public hearing, continue that one too. That would be great. I don't know. Do we want to do that? Uh, is there staff doesn't want to report on that? I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on 1800 Powell Street, Holiday Inn? Seeing none, we'll continue it to April 29th, 1999. That moves us down to five. Commissioner comments. Are there commissioners so that is wish? Does that one continue to April or May? April, if you will. April 29th. Okay. They're all, all three were continued to April 29th. So between that and the Bay, uh, excuse me, the South Bay front, uh, we're going to have a lot to do. The South Bay front's going to be on next Thursday night. No. Oh, isn't that why we're meeting next week? Yes, but not anymore. I mean, the South Bay front is still uh, in process with developing a complete application. So do and we? And we've run into some complications. Do we but think that might be ready for the regular May meeting? That's what we're shooting for. We're expecting plans next week, and so by the 29th I'll let you know, because we, we will know where we are. Complications? Mm-hmm. Okay. But not with the design. Okay. No, not not, not trying to rule with an iron oh, yes. fist, but don't call me up and ask for a special oh, I, meeting. I, I <laughs> 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 Commissioner, comments? Yeah, I have one. Mr. Lewis. Uh, um, actually, two. Uh, first of all, uh, are we doing, I know I talked with a uh, uh, city council member about uh, Pac Bell and um, trying to get some uh, service, uh, a little better service. Have that came up at the ISDN. council meeting on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And what we decided to do, I believe, and I'll check with Susan on this for you specifically, is there were also questions about cable and concerns. So they decided to have a telecommunications workshop meeting with Pac Bell, the cable provider, and duke it out. Excellent. And I will, I think it's the first meeting in June, but I'll check with Susan about it. Uh, I have a request. Uh, Mr. Lutz still has the floor. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, I give three minutes of my time to <laughs> Yes. It won't take that long. Would you invite Telligent to that meeting? Sure. So on the June, are, are we well, what, I'll, all I'll, what I'll do is I'll confirm with the commission when it is, and then you want Telligent? Invite them to that meeting. Okay. Good. Yeah. Competition. Well, Chair, I just wanted to... Is that, to is that a good inv invitation? Sure. Or a That's bad... a good invitation. Don't you want they competition? The, the post office and Pac Bell, you know. It's it. That's what we need. And uh, the, the, uh, the only other thing was uh, my, my uh, interest in our other hotel, not Woodfin, but our other one is... Uh, is there any news Chaparral? on Chaparral? Um, The Hilton? Yeah. Where are we on that? There's quiet this conferences. <laughs> Covered microphones. While they discuss it, does Mr. Cromarty want to say something? Yes, I just want to let you know, Telgen has put the flags up on the buildings. So if you want oh, to take a look at their... They actually had to look for them, but they're, they're kind of... They're up there, so 
Um, if, can we rush uh, you the windows out here? Yeah, you can start looking. <laughs> and uh, if you have any, you know, concerns, let us know. Otherwise, I think they're pretty innocuous, and uh, we'll, you know, we'll give them an uh, okay approval unless I hear from you, say, by about Wednesday of next week. Since they put them up, I just thought I'd give you an opportunity to take a look at them before we made a final say so. Great. Okay. Great. Okay. Any other commissioner comments while we're stalling yeah. for legal staff to? Uh, um, there are discussions uh, about assigning the DDA to a different party, and that will be brought to the agency soon, we hope. Okay, thank you. You don't want to say the M name? I thought, I thought that I had talked to Patrick about that a few weeks ago because, the, you know, and I was basically told that they had until the end of April to either do it or it was dead. So, so it's they're still trying to trying to say exactly. that. Exactly. If, if the um, if there's not an assignment acceptable, then then it goes back in the market. Then we're looking at the. Um, the, the current Orient and Western is in default uh, under their DDA, and so it would be up to the agency to decide whether to terminate that if a acceptable assignment is not brought forward. See, my question, I guess, comes in, in you know, we're planning the uh, intersections based on that hotel, you know, from the uh, South Bayfront. So w what happens there? Does that impact the South Bayfront? Uh, only in a positive sense. Oh, that's good. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Any other comments? I have. Go ahead. I just wanted to make sure you, there's a couple of items coming up. Um, the Lowenberg building on the corner of uh, Hollis and, and 66th, 64th, Next to uh, is in or is pending for a redevelopment application, so that will be in to you within the next couple of months. Um, speaker Properties is finishing their environmental review, and you should get the um, environmental study next week on that. I'll circulate it for your review with a hearing in May. Uh, so we're going to have a collision course at the May meeting, but I think they're ahead. And um, is there anything else going on? No, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, it might be good if uh, planning commissioners could put a meeting on their calendar May 11th in these chambers at 5.30 p.m. Off-street parking, we're going to be inviting the property owners to say, uh, gee, what do you think about off-street parking and are you willing to uh, uh, assess yourself to, uh, uh, or allow the city to assess you? That's right. It's an important. And, and you know, I, I think it's pretty important for, quote unquote, north of Powell. And then the, your recommendations to the Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, to the council regarding Park Avenue <coughs> are scheduled tentatively for a workshop with the council on the 18th of May. And prior to that, uh, we have it drafted. I'll get it out to you tomorrow or, or Friday. I mean, or Monday. <laughs> um, tomorrow or Friday. I'm in good shape. We have, um, we have a, a zoning and general plan committee meeting on the... God, when is the next? Well, we have to set it. Did yeah. we set it? We have to set it. Second Wednesday is what it should be, which would be the 12th. Yeah, so that's a busy week. My family's going to love me. Yeah, that would be the 12th. Is that, should we yep, aim for that? It's the day before the last day of the month. Yes. I guess we'll let her go. She called beforehand, right? Yes, she did. I had already kind of called her and I said, yeah, you know, I didn't really want to do it, but I was willing to do it for the South Bay. Right. Does, 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 that, here, does that mean she's not going to complain about that uh, project near her home? I'm, I'm going um, to I'm, I'm send everybody from my building down here about King Gulf. You'll have a big turnout. Well, I wasn't specific. Are we going? Are we going? We're adjourned at... Uh, 749.